What's up guys? For today's video I'm going to be discussing uh, hydrogen embrittlement. This is a topic we covered in chapter 17, um, forms of corrosion. Uh, and you'll see here I have a picture on the left, the microstructure of a material that has fractured due to hydrogen embrittlement. And on the right side I have a bolt that has um, fractured from it. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. So right off the bat we'll start with the definition. Hydrogen embrittlement is um, the loss or reduction of ductility and tensile strength of a often steel alloy. And it is a result of diffusion of atomic hydrogen in the material. Uh, commonly you'll hear it referred to as hydrogen induced cracking, hydrogen stress cracking, or simply cold cracking. And a cool thing to note is that it's actually considered a type of failure rather than corrosion. We'll get into that here in just a second. So to talk about the process a little bit, um, a couple of preliminary things. Uh, some materials are more susceptible than others. I have some examples there. Um, high strength steels, titanium alloys, and aluminum alloys. Basically metals with a higher tensile strength are more subjected to this. And the second bullet is cool to note that we actually don't know a lot about it as of right now. We can't really detect it as it's on setting. Um, it's not completely understood. And so we still have ongoing research into this. Um, engineers are trying to figure out why they can't um, design structural steel to withstand a simple hydrogen gas. Anyways, um, but what happens is uh, hydrogen diffuses along the grain boundaries and it combines with carbon forming methane gas. And this methane gas will go down into these pockets um, along the grain boundaries and these pockets will accumulate pressure and keep building. And so it's considered a failure rather than a corrosion because these pockets um, simply add more stress onto the material itself. And so when you have the combined force of the pressure in these pockets and whatever external forces are acting on the material, you get a, a failure out of it and the material reaches its ultimate strength there. Um, so that's why it's considered a failure rather than corrosion. And then I have here this picture on the right, um, just showing a little bit of a diagram of it. Uh, you'll see those green boundaries like I was talking about. And so it commonly appears after processes such as phosphating, acid pickling, electropating, plating, and arc welding. And so the cold cracking uh, slang that I introduced earlier actually comes from the arc welding community. So what happens is a welder will run a bead on a material for somebody and they'll bring that weld back to him or call him back and say, hey, my weld broke without being subjected to any extreme temperatures or external pressures. You know, why did it cold crack, if you will? And so what happens is when the welder strikes an arc, he immediately vaporizes any moisture or, um, you know, hydrogen that's on the surface of the material and before that gas can escape he lays down his welding material over it and so he effectively captures it in there and automatically creates those pockets kind of fast like um, but hydrogen embrittlement can occur either intergranularly intergranular or it can be transgranular sorry um, and so there on the left I have a picture of an intergranular sample um, and you can see that the, the fracture happens along the crystalline boundaries of the microstructure. And so it kind of follows the contour of each crystal as it goes through. You can see it kind of looks like a crack in tectonic plates, if you will. And then there on the right, I have an example of transgranular. Um, and it disregards the crystalline structure and just kind of strikes all the way down through. You know, it doesn't really care what it runs through. Um, and so how can you avoid it? Well, the no-brainer there is to reduce hydrogen exposure. So right off the bat, Get rid of any hydrogen that you can. Uh, make sure your material is dry, clean, you know, do what you can. If that does not solve it, you can bake the material afterwards. So by subjecting the material to a high heat, you can vaporize and get rid of the gases inside these pockets. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Another way is to use a different or less susceptible material. You know, you know materials with a lower tensile strength. Or you can use a, uh, you can reduce stress and strain on the material. That way there's less acting on it externally and then the pressure on the inside won't cause it to fracture or fail. That's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching.